We are in chapter 7, the first part of chapter 7, looking at flow over a flat plate. We covered many different possible flows from laminar to turbulent to mix flow. So we're going to use those equations now in an example problem. So here's our example problem. The fluid is water. Let me get a pen here. The fluid is water, and it has a free stream velocity u infinity, and a free stream temperature t infinity. Here's what we're given. We're given the plate length 50 centimeters, 0.5 meters. The plate width into the board, 60 centimeters, 0.6 meters. Free stream velocity, 6 meters per second. Free stream temperature, 20 degrees C. Surface temperature of the plate, 40 degrees C. We evaluate the properties at the film temperature, the average of the surface and the free stream, which is 30 degrees. 40 plus 20 divided by 2 are 303K. We go to the back of the book to the appendices. We find the properties at 303K for water, Prandtl number, thermal conductivity, density, absolute viscosity. Now, the first step in a problem like this is almost always to get the Reynolds number at the end of the plate. So step number one, find the Reynolds number. at the end of the plate. X equal L. So our Reynolds number at L is equal to V uh, U infinity L over nu. Now, the back of the book in the appendices, you won't find the kinematic viscosity nu, so you can calculate it from fluid mechanics. Nu equal mu divided by rho. When you do that, you get this guy. So now you've got everything you need here. And the Reynolds number at the end of the plate comes out to be 3.8636. times 10 to the 6th, greater than 5 times 10 to the 5th. So it's turbulent at the end of the plate. All right, well that tells us right away that it's mixed flow. Because the flow starts out laminar from the leading edge, x equals 0. How do I know that? We well, you know the rule I said. In the textbook, homework problems or in-class examples or a quiz or exam, unless somebody says the flow starts out turbulent from the leading edge, if they don't say that, assume the flow starts out laminar, and then if it's turbulent at the end of the plate, it has to transition from laminar to turbulent flow. Where? At the critical x value, x sub c. Okay, so now we know this. Now we find x sub c. So to find x sub c, Reynolds number xc, u infinity, xc over nu. And where does that occur? Reynolds number? 5 times 10 to the fifth. Solve to get x sub c. 
There it is, 0 0.0652. About six and a half centimeters. Six and a half centimeters. Now how long is the plate? 50 centimeters. Where's the transition occur? Six and a half centimeters right here, up near the front of the plate. So that's our roadmap. So when you get a problem like this, what you want to do is first of all, you want to look at the roadmap. What do I have over here? Because I've got a choice, laminar, turbulent, mixed. So I need the roadmap to tell me what I'm going to use over here to solve this problem. I'm going to solve for various things in this problem. Okay, so number one, here's the first question. Uh, find the local heat flux at x equal one centimeter. Now, don't forget where it transisted. It transisted at six and a half centimeters. So where my fingertip is, one centimeter, okay, conclusion, I'm in the laminar flow regime. Okay, it's laminar flow here. Okay, go over to your equations. Do I want the local? That's local. Do I want the average? No, I don't want the average. Okay. There's my guy right there. What's in this salt number? HX. Well, let's write it down. Laminar flow. U infinity over nu X. One half. Prandtl to the one-third. What's x? One centimeter. Solve for hx. 9882. Heat flux. Heat flux. Q double prime. Local. X. There it is, 1.976 times 10 to the fifth watts per square meter. Number two, what is the heat transfer? over the laminar part of the plate. Not the local, I want the whole heat transfer over the laminar part of the plate. Laminar, laminar. Average H, that's what I want to use, okay? So, my uh, no salt bar. Z 
0 0.664. Same thing here. X sub C, right there. So, H bar, you know everything there. H bar 7740. Q over the laminar part of the plate. H bar times that particular area, Ts minus T infinity. That area is X sub C times W. Here's the homework. You know, I told you last time the rule, right hand, left hand. Where do you want to find the heat transfer? My right hand to my left hand. Where's my left hand? At X sub C. In this equation, what's L? Don't put 50. See, people will say, oh yeah, no, no, L is 50. Oh no, it's not. It's where my right hand is again. Left hand, right hand. I want the average convection coefficient between my two hands. My right hand is at X sub C. So that's why I put X sub C in here. Oh, and then the area between my right hand and left hand. Don't take the whole area. No, it's this distance times W. 0.6. W. Okay, now let's do part three. Find the heat transfer over the whole plate. Okay. Roadmap said what? Roadmap said mixed flow. Okay. Okay, mixed low, okay. So, no salt bar L. Is equal to H bar L over K, 0.037. Reynolds L to the four fifths minus eight seventy one Crandall to the one third that Reynolds number at the end of the plate three point eight three six. times 10 to the sixth. That L, 50 centimeters. From that, I get H bar. Over the whole plate. Okay, we've got, uh, there it is, 12,840. Over the whole plate, H bar times the area. Ts minus T infinity.
the area of the whole plate, 0.5 by 0.6, 0.5, I'll put it here. Whole plate. Oh, we didn't get him, we didn't get cute on here, sorry about that. That was uh, over the laminar part of the plate. Let's see what my Q was there. Oh, here, okay. 6056. Okay, back over here. Uh, this guy here, Q total, 77040. Watts. What is the heat transfer? Over the turbulent part. of the plate. So, part three over the whole plate, part two over the laminar part of the plate, part four over the turbulent part of the plate. Now, what you don't want to do is say, oh yeah, turbulent, got it, right there, the average turbulent. No, no. The heat transfer, right hand, left hand, heat transfer over the whole plate minus the heat transfer over the laminar part of the plate gives you the heat transfer over the turbulent part of the plate. So Q turbulent equal Q total minus Q laminar. We just found Q total. Here he is, 77040 minus Q laminar. We found it in part two, 6056. So over the turbulent part of the plate, 70,984. So you say, well then, when can I use him? You didn't use him in this problem. No, I didn't use him because this wasn't the problem. Was it turbulent from x equals zero? No. If that was my problem over there, turbulent, now if the problem said for homework or an exam, if it says, by the way, assume the flow is turbulent from the leading edge. Okay, that's my picture. Turbulent from the leading edge. My problem didn't say that, it said nothing. If it says nothing, assume it starts out laminar and it may or may not transist to turbulent flow. Okay, so that's why we didn't use this guy. Okay, now, um, if someone says, oh, you know what, this is what I want. I want you to find out how much heat is transferred, this is x equal 50, how much heat's transferred from 20 centimeters to 40 centimeters, 20 to 40 centimeters. Here's 20, here's 40. It's in the turbulent range, got it. How do I find it? Okay, find the heat transfer from zero to 40. Then find the heat transfer from zero to 20 and subtract them, subtract them. That'll give you the heat transfer from 20 to 40. So I don't care where your right hand or left hand is, I'm gonna be over here at x equal two and I wanna go from x equal two to x equal 10. How much heat transfer there? Okay. 
find from zero to 10, subtract zero to two, and that gives you two to 10. Anywhere, a band. Question? You okay? No. Okay. Now, there's, an, there's another rule, this, a rule. This is called the 10% rule. This is what it says. If x sub c is less than or equal to 10% of L, then assume all turbulent. Well, why, why can we assume it's all turbulent? Well, look at the picture. If the transition occurs way down here, close to the leading edge, it looks like it's almost all turbulent flow over the plate. Yeah, right, so we assume it is. It makes life easier, and, you're, and it's, it's a pretty reasonable answer. So let, let's take our problem here, our problem here, 10% uh, L. L is 0.5, so it's 0.05. Okay, uh, x sub c, we found out, uh, there it is, 0 0.0652. And you ask the question, is x sub c less than that? Is 0 0.065 less than 0 0.050? No. Must assume mixed flow over plate. Okay, so, but you, the textbook does it similarly, but he uses a 5% rule. I, I just took 10% because it's a little easier to calculate. So what it means is if the laminar part of the plate is really, really small compared to the turbulent part, you can neglect that little piece of laminar flow and assume it's turbulent from the leading edge all the way back. Okay, so there are how you use these equations over here for a flat plate flow, okay? Get the Reynolds number first, obviously. That's the key thing. Reynolds number first. Okay, any question on that before we go on then? Okay, so we are going to transist to the last part of chapter 7, external flow, flow over bodies. And we go from a flat plate to a circular cylinder. So let's first of all flow over a circular cylinder. So if this pen is a circular cylinder, it is, then we're looking at flow on the outside of the pen. <sighs> flow goes over the pen. If the pen is hot and the air is cold, there's heat transfer convection. By the way, chapter eight is gonna be internal flows, flow of fluids in the tube. Chapter seven is flow on the outside of the tubes, normal to the tube, coming in straight. Okay, so our picture then looks like this. Here's the circular tube. Its diameter is D. And the approaching stream looks like this. We don't use U infinity anymore. We use V, the velocity approaching the cylinder. This is fluid mechanics now, because again, you can't, do the heat transfer unless you have a really good idea of what's going on from the fluid mechanics aspect of the problem. When the flow hits this point here, okay, that is the stagnation point. Stagnation, the word stagnate means to, to be no velocity. 
stagnant fluid. It's not moving. So the velocity is zero there. What happens now is a laminar boundary layer builds up around the perimeter of the tube. This is for a Reynolds number of about 1 times 10 to the fourth. So this is for a Reynolds number VD over nu 1 times 10 to the fourth. So a laminar boundary layer builds up. And when it gets to the back side of the cylinder, it breaks off. Laminar boundary layer goes around the cylinder, gets to the back side, breaks off. This is a laminar boundary layer. This is what's called a turbulent wake region. This is called the separation point. What does that mean? It's the point where the boundary layer separates from the cylinder. It can't hang on any longer. Its momentum won't overcome the pressure change. So it just breaks off from the cylinder wall. Then we have another case. Let's draw this one. Stagnation point, laminar boundary layer. Separation point can actually move on the front side of the cylinder. Separation point breaks off like that. The wake region becomes larger, much larger, the wake region. We still have the laminar boundary layer on the front. We now have the separation point on the front side, and then a large wake region behind it. This Reynolds number is about 1 times 10 to the fifth. And we'll draw one more. Now this is a Reynolds number about 2 times 10 to the 5th. Flow comes in, laminar boundary layer. At a certain point, it transists, turbulent boundary layer, separation point, laminar boundary layer, critical Reynolds number for transition to turbulent, separation point. Wake region. Laminar boundary layer, turbulent boundary layer, separation point. Oh yeah, it's a pretty complicated uh, fluid mechanics situation. Is there a magic Reynolds? Well, flat plate flow, is there a magic Reynolds number? Yeah, 500,000, X critical. Is there a magic Reynolds number for flow over a cylinder? No. The flow changes to pay on the Reynolds number. There's no one magic Reynolds number. Okay, so now, you know, life becomes more complex, obviously. Um, how does the uh, convection coefficient vary? Oh, you know, for a flat plate, we knew how H varied. Hx versus x. Or maybe it looked like this. Turbulent flow, flat. 
that's how that, that's how laminar flow, mixed flow, laminar, transist, turbulent. Okay, how does this look when we plot H here? We don't call it HX, we call it H theta, where theta is measured from the front stagnation point, theta equals zero. So zero, 90 degrees, 180. Let's pick a particular Reynolds number. Uh, the first one I'm going to take is Reynolds of 1 times 10 to the 4th. So it looks something like this. 1 times 10 to the 4th, that's here. Separation point occurs on the back side, on the back side, past 90, back here somewhere. So it goes down, it hits the separation point, and it goes back up again. The wake region creates a bigger H value because it's a very turbulent region. Turbulent eddies are in that region. They're swirling. Let's go to Reynolds number 2 times 10 to the fifth. This guy up here, 2 times 10 to the fifth. Oh yeah, H gets bigger now because Reynolds number is bigger. Now we go through a turbulent location where the flow transits to turbulence. It goes up because now turbulent gives greater heat transfer coefficient. Then it goes back down again to separation point and separation point occurs way back here. It hits here, then it goes back up again. So this is transition. Laminar of turbulent. This is the separation point for this guy. This is a separation point for this guy. And you can see when the boundary layer transists from laminar to turbulent, boy, bang, it goes up really big. H goes up really big. So that's what happens in the heat transfer part of the problem, as you can see. Just like a flat plate with the two figures over there, how does H vary with X? This is how does H vary with um, theta. Now, we're going to look at the equations similar to these, but we'll hold off on that for next time. Mm -hmm.